The views and opinions expressed in this podcast by the host and or the guest do not necessarily reflect the views of the host and or Paranormal Buzz Radio and or its sponsors. Use of any material produced by Paranormal Buzz Radio without express written consent is prohibited. Paranormal Buzz Radio will not be held responsible for you holding your knees, crying, and rocking in a corner in a puddle of your own urine, or being beheaded by a group of children in a cornfield. In fact, if you come across a group of children in a cornfield, we promise to make fun of you as you run away screaming in terror. Listener discretion is advised. You're listening to R.A.P. Paranormal and Friends with your hosts, Kim Purvis and Allison Robinson. Make sure to check us out on our Facebook pages, R.E.P. Paranormal and Friends and R.E.P. Paranormal Busters, for up-to-date show information and events. some technical difficulties. Um, I am trying to get Leslie on here as we speak. Um, it wasn't working and now I think she's figured out how to use Skype. So we're going to plug her in before we get started here with the show. All right. You there? Hello? Leslie? Are you there? Hello? Okay. Hey, we're live. <laughs> yeah, I can hear you. Woo! All right, everybody, we are rolling now. All right. Okay, so let me see here. For some reason, it's off. Oh, shit. Mother trucker. Hang on a second. You can tell I haven't done a live show or a podcast in a while. Okay, so here we go. All right, we are live. (laughs) (laughs) And we finally have Leslie on, so we're going to be talking about our recent trip to the 1858 Garnet House Hotel. <clears throat> so yes what a place you, it was a place now do you remember because like we got there you know we we let ourselves in and so we didn't really have any background or history to this place other than i mean i had had rob garcia on years and years ago like i don't know four or five years ago we had him on when he was the owner i couldn't remember anything you know from that far from that long time ago because you know let's face it i can't remember what i just said 30 seconds ago so um, we didn't really have any history of it when we went there. I mean, you knew a little bit, but, right? Right. We didn't know a um, lot. No, just from what the website had said, um, you know, it was built by some rich guy that moved to town and was lived in uh, by another family, and then it turned into a hotel, brothel, all that usual stuff that happens to these big old houses, and... Um, I know there was at least one murder there by a gentleman, kind of like Velisco, lived in the attic. He, he lived in the attic. He was the helper of the house. Right. And he ended up, he ended up killing somebody I don't, I, that lived there, mm-hmm. the um, current owner of the home. So I knew that there was at least one death there. Who knows with it being a hotel and brothel, what happened with all that. Oh, yeah, for sure. Anything could have happened then. But, right. So... <clears throat> Why don't you kind of give us your thoughts or what your experiences were like at the Garnet? Well, um, right when I got there, you could tell it was just creepy as hell. Mm-hmm. Um, just, you know, we went in and, you know, we kind of walked around. Um, the attic was open upstairs, but you couldn't go up there, but it was open that you could climb a ladder, peek around. And I just, 
Oh, and the, the dead body, the skeleton <laughs> that was <laughs> the dead body. A real human skeleton was there. I, you know, I texted my husband. I'm like, oh god, I can't stay here tonight. I'm not doing this. <laughs> and um, but you know, I I was there. I couldn't walk home, so um, very creepy right from the get go. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I I did have that feeling as well. Um, you know, going into it, not really knowing anything, and then you look at the place, and you're like, um, what the hell did I get myself into? And then, you know, I get the email saying, oh, by the way, we have a skeleton, an actual skeleton in there with no head from the Odd Fellows. Please don't touch, but, you know, you can mm-hmm. investigate around it. I'm like, okay, awesome, great. Um, kind of added to it, but, like, also, each room had, like, a different colored light bulb in there. That was what was freaky. I think that's what kind yes. of helps set the mood to make it yeah. feel the creep factor. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. Because you I see forgot that about those lights. Every damn room had a different... I don't know if there was... Well, I guess the main room had a regular light that we slept in. Because it was bright. Mm-hmm. It was bright. Everyone else was like green, red, blue. Blue, Yeah. So yep. that was kind that of weird. Added, that added to the ambiance, for sure. Oh, yeah, for sure. Now, I wonder if other locations were to put in lights like that, if that would help the factor, you know what I mean, as well. Mm-hmm. People would just automatically and have that sense. The dolls everywhere upstairs. Oh there was no history of children, so I was surprised there's so many dolls there. Yeah. I'm not scared of dolls, but um, I just thought that's... That's and of course we learned later why they have all the dolls there, because apparently the ghosts like them. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> yeah, but it was a it was a like a hospital clinic type thing, so they probably had kids there. Yeah, it wasn't it. Yeah. Wasn't it part? Didn't you or did we read it somewhere that it was part of like you know that train that came through with all the orphans and stuff? The orphan train. Yeah. Well, that's right. Yeah. So. Yeah, and it was, it was part of the underground railroad as well. Yeah. So maybe that's why they have dolls there. Maybe there are children's spirits there. We couldn't really get an answer as to who the hell was there and what was there. And, you know, even going through my recorder, I mean, I still have six hours to go through. I've gone through almost six hours and I still have six hours to go through. But there's just so much on there. So much. So much walking around. You can actually hear the the floors creaking upstairs. You can hear something right next to the recorder. Somebody's breathing yeah. into the recorder. There's a woman talking while we're talking. There's a man talking while we're talking. It's insane. Yeah, we didn't hear any of that. Most of our stuff was visual. We did hear the big boom. Oh, yeah. Um, right right before we went to bed. But Yeah, and I'm still trying. I haven't got to that part yet. Because there's so many spots. I'm like, oh, is that the ball falling? But I'm like, but then we went back upstairs. You think we would have noticed that ball on the floor there? And we didn't notice right. it until the morning. And how it was placed literally by that doorway to the room, that freaking rocking chair doll and rock right. doll. You know, it was it was bizarre. And it came from the attic. We didn't know because we hadn't seen that ball the whole time. We never seen it before until we contacted the owner. He says, yeah, that was the ball up in the attic. And we never <laughs> went up there, so we never really saw what was actually up in the attic. No. We didn't, we didn't, have, right. we didn't go up the stairs or anything because... Said you could set your equipment there at the top, the ledge is up. It's like I wasn't. Even, I don't want to be up there and have some weird shit looking at me. Or right, I know. A doll come <laughs> flying out of the darkness at me. Or well, the way things were flying, I didn't want my equipment going flying either. <laughs> yeah. And it was a real pretty ball. It was a, it was like a kickball, but yeah. it had tie dye colors on it. Mm-hmm. So we would have noticed it right away because it was just it just didn't match the old dolls. It was nice new pretty ball. Right and. When we had first got there, the thing is, okay, so when we first get there, we're going up and down the steps, doing our walkthroughs, getting our setup, and there was that balloon. The, it was a helium balloon. Right. And, you know, it was just always there. We start to set up. Um, we started upstairs right away, and um, we haven't even set up, and you inhaled so you, you know you took a deep breath like you're gonna scream and i thought someone was there yeah because you know and that's when i saw the doll rocking and it wasn't just little rocks oh no it, it was, was full force it was yeah full force going back and forth mm-hmm. and it be you just stand there in awe you know because you've waited your whole life to see something like that 
I know. Of course, I stood be- behind you. <laughs> but, I missed it. You missed it. I yeah, and then so, and then later on that evening, the balloon was in the room where the doll was in the rocker. Mm-hmm. It had moved on its own, and as I was yelling downstairs to you about the balloon, it just kept traveling mm-hmm. through other mm-hmm. rooms and then perched in a baby crib in a, in a back room yeah. and stayed there for the rest of the night. Yeah, that was so bizarre because that balloon actually started up on the ceiling by the attic. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and then later when we were all downstairs and we were doing, you know, asking questions and had went down there, I sat on the steps and I could see that balloon starting to come like towards the steps. So, like, you know, it was up on the ceiling still. So I asked uh-huh. if they could bring the balloon to me. But then when we went back up there, it was literally on the ground in the doorway of that room with that damn rocking chair doll. And then it just proceeded to like move throughout the rooms. Like it went through like three rooms and then perched yeah. itself in a baby crib. Like, And it wasn't a straight shot. It had to go through right. doorways and around the corner to a back room. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we had gone up and down those steps so many times. You right. would have thought our wind or something, you know, just just our, our, our energy being there, you know, it didn't move the whole time until we were downstairs and not looking. Then we went up and it, it had moved to another room around uh, the right. corners. Mm-hmm. Crazy. We literally followed it. I have a little bit of a clip of it where it's just moving like through the rooms, like lofty doll, <laughs> like, you know, yeah. and it was a finger. It was like a number one or something like that. Like it had his finger, like a number one. Yeah. Which was kind of weird, but yeah, I didn't get so, that either. That Yeah, that was, that was strange. So that was the big and then, of course, the doll's falling. I don't know if that's a, a, a Kim and Allison thing or... <laughs> Kim's had it happen to... You I, guys had it happen. You guys were at... You were with me at Edinburgh when it happened. Yeah, was yeah, was it? I wasn't there. Uh-uh. Yeah, that's true. Yep, that doll at Edinburgh. Oh, God. <laughs> I missed that one. Boo. <laughs> Yeah, but we didn't have our camera set up for the rocking chair, so that... Oh, my God, I'm so pissed. And I'm pissed that we didn't catch that one falling on your head either after I asked it to do it. Yeah, so there was this weird ass... So some of the dolls they put on, the smaller dolls, they put on the valances, Mm -hmm. the valance rods, and sat them up there. And I had been sitting there, what, a good 10 minutes, and... It the doll looked like Robin Williams from work. It had a Mork and Mindy outfit on with suspenders and mm-hmm. had Robin Williams' face. So it was just a weird looking doll anyway. You're right. And uh, you had said, you know, I double dare you to fall on Leslie's head. Yeah, yeah. And sure enough, it just plopped right onto my head <laughs> onto the chair that I'm sitting in. And I, yeah. I scream. <laughs> yeah, I she was more focused on that rocking chair. That's why she didn't catch the doll falling. But the thing was, it's like, <laughs> okay, I had Kim's live feed kind of skewed between you and the rocking chair. Because I was like, you know, but I was right. literally focused. Like, I was looking at that doll because then I go, wait a minute. Is that a Mork doll? Is that a Robin Williams doll? Like, I'm asking. And then you mm-hmm. shine your light up there and then you're like, yeah, it is. And then as soon as you turn around, bam, right on your head. I was like, oh, my God. And the crazy thing is, this is all coincidental, I'm sure, but the next day was his birthday. Robin yeah, Williams we found birthday. out it was more, yeah, Robin Williams' birthday. And he just kind of fall on your head. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Now, Kim, yeah. Kim, you had some stuff going on downstairs while we were upstairs. Yeah, you guys were upstairs, and I was sitting at the table writing down some of the stuff that was coming across the ovulus, and I was just sitting there. And I said, I had the tripwire going from the living room to me. And then I had the K2 sitting on the chair. And I said, well, you can come over here and sit by me if you want to. And come and talk to me. And each light on the trip light went one, two, singly, till it came to the chair and the K2 went to red. So I, oh, said, nice. I said, well, hi, come and join me. <laughs> but I could never get the ovulus to say anything 
with them sitting there or anything. Right. And I, I didn't hear anything on the recorder. Like I said, I still have six hours to go through, but I have to find time to do that. I am. Well, like, yeah, it's just like oh. each like one at a time, like they were walking very slowly. Mm hmm. But not only. Okay, so when we were upstairs, we had that stuff happen, but we came downstairs and we were, you know, visiting with Christina, a.k.a. the skeleton from the Odd Fellows. We were down in that room asking questions. Hmm. You had gone out side to have a cigarette, and you came in, kind of tapped me on the shoulder, and I was like... Well, I was headed out, but oh. I, sh- I turned around and came back and tapped I was going to scare you. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. And then we heard that loud bang, mm-hmm. and uh, and I heard you go, oh, ho, ho, like that. And I go, was that you? And you said, no. And I'm like, you thought... Somebody had thought it came from upstairs. I'm like, it came from the room next door. So then Les- it was Leslie that went around in there, and there was a freaking... Book book, laying right out the middle of the floor. Right. I mean, those books were so tight together. It literally had to have a lot of force to come off that shelf and land on the floor. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, is that 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 book, I'll pull it up here, was about, like, something about... Christian in the courtroom. Yeah. And it was lawyer stuff. Yeah, lawyer's guide. Yeah, some stuff in the courtrooms. Right. Okay. This is so bizarre. Where did all my stuff? Friction in the courtroom. Here it is. Yes. Friction goes to court. Yeah. Favorite stories of lawyers and the law selected by famous lawyers edited by Albert P. Blostein. And then, so we're like, okay, what does that have to do with anything? And then later in the night when you, Leslie, got on your phone and was like looking it up, the actual guy who built the place and stuff was actually a lawyer. (laughs) Yeah. He was, he was the attorney for the county there. And I think he was also an attorney in Pennsylvania mm-hmm. where he lived before he moved to Kansas. Mm-hmm. And so, because, yeah, I, you know, they, you know, a lot of times when they, a book lands like that, you kind of look and see. You're right. So they're trying to give you a message. And I, so I thought, well, let's see if this guy's a lawyer. And uh-huh. sure, sure enough, he was. Yeah. So maybe he was there with us. I mean, yeah. I- I don't know. Like I said, I have a woman's voice and a man's voice so far on the recorder. Did you make out any words or did you just hear the voices? There's one I thought. I didn't bring my notebook downstairs. It's upstairs because ha- I've been writing down detailed notes. But there is a woman and there's one part that says something about help. And there's another one that's whispering. And mm-hmm. I, I can't because it's like we're talking. We're all talking. And you can hear these voices under us. <laughs> And the funny oh. thing is about the doll falling on Lily. Yeah. I wasn't up there. Yeah. But on the ovulus, just before you guys scream, uh-huh. it says, turn key, run. Oh, yeah. I remember and, you and saying then, something about then that. Then I hear you guys screaming, and I'm going, maybe I should run. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know if I've ever been in a location with this many things happening. Like... You know, right? Not instantly, like it was. I mean, we weren't even investigating for half an hour, and within the half an hour, we had all this stuff happen to us. Usually, it takes them to get used to you a little bit, but no. I mean, yeah, yeah. I had gone upstairs. Also, when we got upstairs to investigate, right? I went into that closet. That, uh, it was that creepy dark closet, right? To get, I saw a chair sitting in there, mm-hmm. so I brought the chair out so I could sit in it while we did our EVP sessions, right? And then later that night, when we had gone up there, the light was on in the closet. Yeah, the candle. The, yeah, yeah a little candle. Uh-huh. Those battery-operated ones. Right, yeah. And you you said, did you turn this on? And I said, no, because I was creeped out in that closet. Because yeah. there was no light. It was dark. Yeah. So, uh-huh. yeah, just a, just a strange. And then, of course, you know, we're getting our sleeping bags out. We're tired. And then we hear upstairs, boom, boom, boom. Uh-huh. And I was like, what the hell was that? <laughs> Leslie was about ready to go sleep in her car. Yeah. She was oh, gonna... yeah. I know. I was saying, I'll I'll put, put the hotel. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, no. We're we're camping out here. Just like I did at Villisca when we went. I'm like, oh, no. Nobody's leaving. We're staying. Like, because <laughs> you like, yep. ready to leave. And I'm like, oh, no, no, no. We're staying. But... Um, oh shit, I just disconnected Kim. I'm getting too crazy with my hands. I disconnected her, <laughs> her microphone, her eyeballs. Anyways, um, yeah, I mean, that place was just, 
I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's because we went in with no expe- expectations because we didn't know the history. We didn't have somebody in our ear saying, oh, this has happened here. This has happened here. This has happened here. You know? Mm-hmm. And so we're like, oh, well, maybe this stuff is going to happen. And it doesn't. We just went in like, oh, hey, sorry. I can't be there. Here's a key. Lock up when you're done. Whatever. And we just had free reigns of the place and all hell broke loose. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of honestly how I like it. Like, I mean, yeah, I'd like to meet the people that own it or whatever, but I don't always want to know what experiences they've had there, what history, because I want to try mm-hmm. to experience stuff on my own and I don't want to have any expectations of that. I want to know the back history of the place, but not what people have experienced. Yeah. And sometimes I like yeah. to know the history, but sometimes I don't because like if I'm in there and then I start hearing stuff or somebody comes to talk to me or whatever, then I kind of want to be like, okay, who is this? Like, ask them, like, do you have recollection? Or do you know who this person is? Have you had this name come across or whatever? Kind of like with Josh mm-hmm. and Rosie. Mm-hmm. Rosie, the first time we went there, kept coming up and he's like, oh, how was your guys' night? And I'm like, oh, it was great, but who's Rosie? And then, you know, he had this look on his face and he took me to his office and was like, meet Rosie. And I was like, holy shit, it's a haunted doll. You know, yeah. I had no clue, but she was talking to me all damn night. Um, so, you know, I think sometimes going in, not knowing everybody's experiences helps also because it helps with the creep factor also. You know what I mean? Yeah. Even though mm-hmm. we did hear some from when we went to Indiana State from that guy, I was still really spooked out by those grounds. I didn't like the snakes. Mm-hmm. I didn't like the snakes or the groundhog. Or the groundhog. The groundhog. <laughs> Jesus, we were trapped in there because it wouldn't leave the building. <laughs> one one direction was the snakes and the other direction was the grotto. <laughs> well, they can be mean. I'm sure they can be, but I just, I just pushed through it and be like, okay, I'm getting the hell out of here. You got to go. But well, that's interesting. You got the word hell because mm-hmm. when the guy murdered the mother of the house, the daughter came and found her mm-hmm. and had to run for help. Mm -hmm. Um, she found her mother dead slayed, Mm -hmm. murdered Mm -hmm. and it was an axe I believe so yeah Yeah, it's sitting in the corner yeah it's down there I'm like why the hell is there an axe here because you know we didn't know anything about it until you read about it and I was like oh that explains why there's an axe hanging over in the corner yeah a bloody axe a bloody axe you know Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's I think it's fake blood but yeah but it's a real axe yeah and the way things were being thrown. Oh, God. If that would have came at us, we would have all been decapitated. <laughs> yeah. And the next morning, you know, before we left, we went upstairs and another doll, that Raggedy Ann doll, had, uh-huh. another doll had fallen off. Right. And that's where we were going to sleep. Oh, yeah. We were was, up, was up in that room. So one of us would have woke up with a Raggedy Ann doll, oh. you know, next to us on the floor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I wasn't sleeping up there. It wasn't happening. I kind of wanted to, but I sure as hell wasn't going to sit up there by myself. So next time somebody's got to go up there, we're going to, we're going to power through it and see what all kinds of stuff we can get through. through Yeah. I think a Estes method would be good too next time. I wanted to do that because I brought my little things that look like, it looks like a bra for your eyes. You know, it's supposed to cover them. Oh, that's right. You did have that. I did bring it and I did sit up there for a while. You know, I didn't have headphones in or anything. We were just sitting up there and I put them on just to see, and that was really trippy. But I really wanted to try the Estes method up there. Because I think if I would have tried that, who knows what a... I couldn't have carried you outside. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm thinking, well, yeah. maybe maybe this weekend I can try it. I'll bring my little, yes. booby, my little booby goggles and we can try yes. it and see what happens. We haven't been yeah. there for so long. I didn't say it, Yeah. Kim's just giving me this look like, oh, I didn't you motherfucker. Say <laughs> well, I saw Cornfield at Fed was there last week, so I told him to rile him up for us. Oh, so. yeah. yeah. I, I did tell, because I saw Jill posted it, and I'm like, we're going to be there the following weekend. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, Hopefully we get something. Last time we were there, we didn't get nothing. Yeah, we got nothing. But you never know. It's been eight plus years seven eight yeah. years since we've been there so oh my gosh okay so hopefully it's a cool place it's a really cool place mm-hmm. it's just we didn't get any of the first time, so we'll see what happens this time i'm not gonna go in with any expectations nope. and if they give us a tour i don't want to hear it because i don't want to hear what all they've experienced there because like i just i feel like that's gonna help me like mm-hmm. you know i'm excited yeah. i'm excited because i am ready to get part i like here. about tours is you can get the actual name of people. Yeah. That way you have a list. 
-hmm. and then you can go through and they may not our list we got a new name right yeah but mm -hmm. not everybody needs to go on just at least one person to right get names and stuff mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. there's there's so much stuff in there for museum part people have donated so uh-huh you get a yeah. lot of stuff you don't know what's going to be attached to that or anything or what kind of energy it's going to have if people are just, you know. Just like at the Orange House. Right. Look at all that, those typewriters and stuff we were getting. Oh, yeah, up there. Yeah, that room was the exact room. I don't understand. And it was still daylight. It was like 5, 30, 6 o'clock in the evening. Mm -hmm. Still daylight out. All the stuff mm -hmm. we were getting. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. But I know I want to get back to the Garnet. Oh, yeah. I want to get there and I want to do the white face because... I've heard that place is good too. And it's owned by the same person. It's what, like a 45? He said it was an hour, but I, I looked it up and it's probably about 45, 50 minutes from mm. from Burnett. I say we make a weekend of it and just knock them That's both out. a long weekend. It is a long weekend, but <laughs> it would be worth it. If there's a bar nearby, because I'd probably need a drink yeah. <laughs> to make it through. <laughs> You'd have to do it over. When you have a three-day weekend, because yeah. we wouldn't be able to get down there Friday. Yeah, that's true. So you'd have to do it Saturday and Sunday, investigations, mm -hmm. and then drive back Monday. Mm -hmm. I could, honestly, I could miss a Monday at work. I'm not going to say one, but I could miss a Monday at work. <laughs> oh, I could, too. Mm -hmm. If I have to, I, yeah. can, I can do it. You had an emergency doctor's appointment. No, <laughs> Todd's into this stuff. He always asks, where are you going this weekend? Where are you going this weekend? You should haul, mm -hmm. haul his butt with us one of these times. I don't think he'll go. You, I know he gets into our live feeds every now and then, but... Yeah, he's watched them all, but not come in right when we do them. Uh-huh. He's watched them all. Mm-hmm. He loves them when we go to the Redemption Center. Yeah. Mm -hmm. he oh always, yeah, usually I'll say, I'll be like, oh, Kim Todd's in here, <laughs> he's in chat. <laughs> oh, Which we haven't done for a while. No, we haven't. Mm -mm. No? We haven't done a lot of places in a while. Like, I don't know, Leslie, where do you want to, where, where do you want to go? Like, what's another place you want to get back to? Um, I don't know. <laughs> Ashmore. Ashmore was a good one. Yeah, that'd be a good place to go back to. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, that's a good one. I've been to Waverly a couple times, um, I but been yet. Ashmore's good. Indiana State was good. Oh, yeah. That one was I really I really didn't get a lot. I A lot of people talk Missouri State, but mm -hmm. um, I got, you know, a little bit there. Mm -hmm. Chad and I did down in the holding cells, but... Mm -hmm. <sighs> But yeah, no. That, that's not really. There, I didn't realize. I know Indiana is like, it's a jaunt. But when I was researching, right. there are so many damn places there. It's insane. And yeah. one of them has a jail. Okay, so in Indiana, there's a jail. And I've told Kim this. If you do the jail, you can also do, they have a speakeasy, which would be cool. We've never done a speakeasy. Mm-hmm. And it looks really cool. And you can do... Both of them, you can add the speakeasy to that for an extra hundred bucks. It's like oh, okay. It's like five hundred bucks to do two locations or something like that. In one night, huh? In one night. In one night, yeah. How yeah. big are these places? I don't. They don't look very big, honestly. I was say, they can't be very big, or you never get it done. No, the jail was not that big. I want to say it's like Blackbird County or something like that. Maybe I'm getting mixed up with the other one from. Dwight that we had on, but I have them in here, but I mean, I was going through and I'm like, oh my gosh, these places sound cool, and you know, we've never done like a speakeasy, and that place looked creepy as hell. Yeah. With all the graffiti yeah. and everything on the walls, and... Hey, well, let's just go to New York and do the Hinsdale house. I want to get to Hinsdale. I've always wanted to get to Hinsdale. Yeah. Yes, that'd be a nice trip. Dad wants to do uh, the Gettysburg. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, he thinks that place seems like there's a lot of places. That would have to be a whole weekend. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, the, the Hensdale house, that's a, that's a jaunt, though. <laughs> it is a I jaunt. don't know how many places you can investigate at Gettysburg anymore. 
There's a few. Yeah. But you can't do the battlefield anymore at night. Right. That's where they got a lot of their evidence was out on the battlefield. Mm-hmm. But they don't allow don't allow you out there no more at night. He um he wants to do Black Hills too the those western oh. Deadwood. Oh oh yeah I've heard yeah mm-hmm. yeah I've heard that one. I'd like to do the Black Swan Inn. Yeah. Oh that's in like Texas huh? Tombstone. Oh yeah uh huh. Oh yeah. There's so many places, but it's like, God dang. Well, I mean, we were always we've always been invited to the Omen House. Oh, that's yeah. in California. If somebody wants to drive us there. I'll drive. He cook us a meal and everything, man. Free barbecue. You know what, Will? Free, <laughs> for free barbecue. <laughs> that's more than just a weekend jump. Oh, yeah, it is, for sure. Ghosts but, and ribs? Hell yeah. yeah. It's it, one of my favorite it, things. Uh-huh. It's a two two day uh-huh. Right. Two, two and a half day drive if you drive straight through. Mm-hmm. That's not stopping. Oh, I know. Because we, we did it all many years. Uh huh. That's just to Los Angeles. Oh, yeah, no, we always flew to California. We never drove to see my aunt there. Oh, we always had to drive. I've always wanted to go to that lighthouse, too, in Florida, the Augusta oh. or oh, yeah. Florida or something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah, that would be cool to do a lighthouse. I would love to do a lighthouse. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Transgate. Yeah, and there's a lot of theaters. We haven't done any theaters, but there's like a ton of haunted theaters. Oh yeah, that would be cool too. Yeah. Transgate. Oh yeah. Josh Gates is investigating it this week uh-huh. on Wednesday, mm-hmm. and then their conclusions next Wednesday. Oh shit, I haven't watched that yet. Um. Yeah. Okay. So that place I was talking about is the Blackford County Jail. Okay. Um. And then you can also investigate the Irvin Campbell Speakeasy, which is right on the square. And so basically for up to eight people, it's mm-hmm. $450. You had it, so it would be $550 to do both locations for eight people. For eight people, you send four one way, four another and then, way. And then we can split switch. halfway through. Yep. And switch. Uh-huh. And then, yeah, that would work. Yep. And you get it from 6 p.m. to 10 a.m. Oh, okay. That's not bad. Mm-mm. No, it's not. And I mean, it's got electricity, it's got water, it's got heat in most areas. <laughs> the Garnett House, though, they wouldn't let us in until 8. That kind of bothered me because. Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, usually we're around 5 o'clock and we're. We time as well as the night time. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but yeah. that's okay. We still got plenty. Oh, we had action no matter what time events. we got there. Oh, shit, no kidding. We should have stayed a little bit later to, like, to see what happens while you're in the morning hours, you know what I mean? But, like, I only got 40 minutes of freaking sleep. 40 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> and when you said, are you okay to drive if I get tired? I'm like, okay, yeah, sure, why not? Yeah, Let's sure. <laughs> sure, why not? I might fall asleep. Maybe we'd become that burning vehicle on the side of the road that we saw. Yes. <laughs> That was not terrible. Yeah, I didn't get much sleep that night either. Mm. The floor was vibrating. Oh, that's what you said, yeah. So I didn't get much sleep either. Uh uh-uh. uh. I just heard a lot of movement. The tripwire kept going off. And I just, yeah, I heard upstairs. And I'm like, and then I heard that big bang. And at one point I shot up like that. And then I was like, are you okay? And I'm like, what was that noise? Like, what was that? <laughs> I know. You're scared that a ghost is going to be staring at you in the middle of the night, but it's uh, actually Allison sitting up in the middle of the night. <laughs> you open your eyes. What are you doing? What's wrong? I never sleep. Like, I don't, I hardly get any sleep at any locations. There's been a handful of times where I'm like, man, I slept like a baby. But that's mm-hmm. been, that's been a hot minute since I've had one of Melbourne, those Melbourne, I can sleep in there, no problem. Mm, the last time we were there, no, I did not. That was because I had stomach ache. Like, my stomach mm-hmm. was bothering me really bad. Or I'm hungover, one of the two. <laughs> women's yeah. club, no problem. The women's club, I did not sleep because that damn music box. Well, you're the ones that said leave the girl in. I didn't realize it was going to go off all night. And I'm like, I am not walking all the way up there by myself to turn that stupid thing <laughs> yeah, off. Like, I let it run out of batteries, essentially. By 6 o'clock, it finally You're off. the one that wanted to leave the girl in. Yeah, no. I think it would be fun to have the Women's Center do a, a like a zombie prom or a zombie New Year's Eve party or something and everybody Oh yeah, that'd be fun. You know, dress up and dress or whatever and mm-hmm. be bloody and ghostly and I think that would be fun to just have a big party out there. 
Oh yeah, for <laughs> sure. It's only three hundred dollars mm-hmm. to rent it. Right. Um, I was gonna talk to April about it on the way down to Garnett, but she ended up not going. So. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. But. Yeah, something like that would be fun. I mean, I've done one of those before, but it's been a hot minute. Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> I think you know. I saw the, you know, when I had talked to Will Conkle, the. Oh. You know, they had their wedding there, and they've mm-hmm. had parties there, and mm-hmm. costume parties. I just thought, well, we could do something like that at the Women's Center. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but will they go for it? Yeah, that's true. Because it's a zombie prom. It's not uh-huh. high society type thing that they have there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you'd have probably have to get the board to okay, and they've probably got more than Right. Yeah, that's true. And that's that's where I was gonna get April to come in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> one right. of the girls on the board is one of my patients, and oh, wow. um, I know, but you know, I just kind of wanna, cause she trusts me. Mm-hmm. You know, but I don't know. We'll see. It's something that It'd we can look at sometime. It'd be fun to do. Like I said, they have them at that Belvoir Winery in oh, yeah, I wanna, Missouri. Yeah, yeah. They always have parties there, masquerades, or mm-hmm. you know, they had. I think this year it was eighties zombie party. Everybody dressed as dead eighties people. Oh, <laughs> I would have liked that, especially at a winery. Hello, like that's yeah, that's um, the way to my what's heart. What's their name? Does them? Um, Adam and Amy. Oh yeah. From uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, they have parties out there, oh, yeah. and there's a theme every year. Mm-hmm. And I just thought that might be kind of fun to do. It would be so, and the money goes to you know the women's center is a historical right. place here in Cedar Falls, and mm-hmm. it, it would go to help keep that up. Right. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. I mean, I would be down to do that. I mean, we just have to get Kim a dress. <laughs> they get me in no dress. Last time she did one, we painted her face green. We put screens over her eyes so it didn't look like she had any eyeballs. And nice. She, and she wore like what a flannel shirt or something. Flannel ripped shirt. Yeah. And a wet t-shirt and my boot jeans. I literally bought a dress from uh, the Salvation Art. No, that's a uh, Goodwill. And I threw it out in the dirt. Put some leaves on it. Teased my hair up. Put some leaves in my hair. My face. Yeah. I had a good old time, though. I was out there on that dance floor, whether there was anybody out there with me or not. I was sitting up against the wall. Yeah, Kim was sitting out there against the wall. That doesn't surprise me with either one of you. (laughs) I don't dance. I like to dance, but usually it takes a couple drinks for me to get out there and do that. But I was having a good old time out there. It was nice. So, yeah, I mean, I think that would be fun to do. Well, you know... just have to find a location that will allow us to do it. That has room for us to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Um, let's see here. Before we wrap things up, do you have anything else you want to say about the Garnet or? I would just say book it. If you guys, if someone wants to go, book it. It's worth it. Oh, it is for sure. Like I said, I'm ready to go back there, like, now. Like, mm-hmm. just because I want more time there. Plenty of outlets, um, you know, for equipment, Mm -hmm. plenty of room for everybody for equipment, too. Mm -hmm. You know, it was a small town. They had a gas station. It's just, it's convenient. Mm -hmm. It was haunted. Mm -hmm. It's just worth it. Oh, yeah, for sure, hands down. Um, I just zoned out there. I just zoned out there for a minute. I'm like, I'm running on fumes, okay? Like... (laughs) I spent it was, and it's four hours from your hometown, right? Right, yeah. It's five, yeah. Yeah, it's not really yeah. that far, so I mean, mm-hmm. it's good. I mean, we drive three hours, a little over three hours to Malvern, so it was like an extra hour and 20 minutes or something from our place or something like that. Right, so, right. Yeah, know. it's just south of Kansas City. It sounds, you know, you think Kansas, you got to drive clear to Wichita or something, but no, it's just mm-hmm. right there across the border. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I mean, some of the driving had me a little like, oh my gosh, I need a cocktail when we stop, but I didn't. You, I, I needed a cocktail after driving with you. <laughs> driving with me? Oh my lord, I 
almost got killed by that car coming into our lane. And you're just like, oh, you dog. Like, oh my God, we're swiping paint with this car. And I just went off on him. Like, she, she's a back, time, she's a backseat driver. I am. She's in my lap, fucking driver. That's what she was. She was. Every time I pass a semi now, I think of Allison. Mm-hmm. Okay, and when you've been in a sep- couple accidents with semis, then then you'll know what it's like. <laughs> oh but yeah, no, I I didn't know if we'd make it. <laughs> we did. We did. So wonder you didn't have a hole in the your floor. <laughs> I know. Be pushing the brakes. And that's what kept me awake on the drive home was her constantly jumping to my side of the car. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you're tired and you're jumpy and everything. Just you know, you're like, because you're, yes. and so it's like, oh my god, <laughs> like I was freaking out over every little thing, but it's like I couldn't help it. I could not help it. People drive like yeah, you were wound crazy, mofo. You were wound up. I was wild for sound, that's for sure. Yeah, you always have that adrenaline when you leave. You're tired, but you still have that adrenaline mm-hmm. from a hunt. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you get, you're get you still a little wound up, and it's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, for sure. But, like, paranormal uh, hangovers are the real thing. Like, mm-hmm. I'm so exhausted, and I'm just, like, an absolute bitch afterwards. Like, like <laughs> don't anybody talk to me. Don't anybody, mm-hmm. whatever... Let me sleep, Mm-mm. which, yeah, I don't, I, I'm usually at home doing laundry, dishes, food, whatever. Then I go to my mom's and I have to have a couple drinks <laughs> so I can knock mm-hmm. myself out <laughs> for the night. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I go home. Eric goes, find any goes. Okay. Good night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you you crash when you get home, and you know, mm-hmm. and then you it, you can easily turn around and crash later that night to go to go to bed to get up for work the next day. Who, who, who gets up uh, when I crash? I'm out for the whole night. Oh really? No, I take a nap, wake up about eight, go back to bed about ten, and the rest of the night. <laughs> no, me, I'm out. As soon I, as I get in that bed, I'm out. No, bye. Usually, I'll see Eric at four thirty in the morning. Then I'm up at 5 a.m. go to the gym. <laughs> Except for this morning. I did not do that after the concert last night. I did not get my ass up because my stomach hurt from the beer. And I had a corn dog and a cookie. And That'll do it. I was laying on the ground before the concert started in pain because I had that stuff. I was like, you know, you only live once. I'm at the state fair. I need a fucking corn dog. <laughs> like, yes. Whether it's gonna make my stomach hurt and then I'm gonna regret it the next morning with stomach issues, it was worth it. I almost gave you money to bring me home a grinder, but I didn't. I did look for your raccoon dicks. They did not have those though. But <laughs> what? <laughs> no, uh, but I always raccoon get a grinder dicks. when I'm there, and oh. I, I always go. Should I send money with us? She could get me. You should have. But she wouldn't want to hold it through the concert and everything. So. Oh well, we could have stopped afterwards because the guys were standing. There, oh my god, I just, this is totally off topic, but this reminds me of that. We were standing there waiting for the concert to start, and there's this stand there, it's called Chicken City. And I kept seeing these guys, like, getting up and sit, like, jumping up on a cooler, and then sitting on the ledge of, like, the top of the little stand. And I'm like, what the hell are they doing? Well, they got food, they got their drinks, and those two just hopped up there, and they sat up there. And then they were standing up there, and one of them was in overalls, the other one was dressed in jeans and a t-shirt. The one overalls ended up taking off his shirt. Was up there in his overalls. They grabbed the flag from the side of the thing. They were waving their flags around. And then it started to get really dark. So then I don't know where they got this light. It looked like a lightsaber. And they were out there swirling that around with the flag. Then the other guy took his shirt off. Then he had it partially on. And then it started to rain. And I don't know where they got the umbrella. But then they picked up an umbrella. And they had an umbrella up there on top of this food stand. And they kept looking over at us. And they're like... Waving, they're like fist pumping, and I was like, "Yeah!" And he's like waving at me, like, "Come over, come over!" I'm like, "I ain't fucking leaving this place!" Like, and then they're trying to get people to come. You guys, what? He's like, you "Guys, what? You can see what she's saying." I'm like, "What is going on here?" I have a video of it. I'll have to send it to you. I was like, what is going on? Everybody's like, they're fixing lights. I'm like, those guys are not fixing lights up there. They're literally taking their clothes off and they're trying to get people to buy sandwiches. 
God. <laughs> Let's wrap things up. Anyways. So. Okay. Thank you for What do you think of the garnet? Yes or no? Oh. You know me. I'm ready to go back. I'm ready to yeah. go back. I am ready to go back. Like, hands down. If I could have, I would have been back the next day. No, no shit. Yeah. I would have known I was going to be that active. I would have. Because right. I mean, we don't have to be there until 8 o'clock at night. So, technically, we could have went on a Friday night. Yeah. But that yeah. makes a long night. I know it makes a long night, but we could have done tonight or Yeah. Friday and Saturday and leave Sunday. Because we could have stayed a little later saying, we need sleep. Mm-hmm. Do Saturday, Sunday, take off Monday. I'm always down to take down Monday. <coughs> oh, for real. Mondays suck ass. I can't sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hate Mondays. Excuse me, I got the hiccups. It's the Ew, me it's too. Lot, it's fine talking. Anywho. Thank you to everybody who joined us for our chat on the 1858 Garnet House. And, of course, we talked about some other locations, too. And thank you to Leslie, our teammate, for being on, talking about the Garnet. And uh, let's see here. What do we got on next week? I have to check my schedule because I've been all over the place. I can't even think. So next week is Paul Nugent. I'm probably saying his last name wrong. I'm sorry. But we're going to be talking about extraterrestrials. So stay tuned oh. for that one. That one's going to be interesting, so stay tuned for that one. We've got some interesting shows coming up. Um, I did reschedule last week's show. She was sick. Um, Carmen turned her shot. She's going to be back on talking about astrology. Um, so that's coming up, too. So check that out. And thank you, everybody. And thank you to Leslie, our guest tonight. And peace out until next time. Bye. Good night.